Okay, guys. Just opening up these boxes really quick. So I got some really great questions about menstrual cups. And I'm super excited. I don't know, is that like a weird... It's so funny doing lives, you guys, because it seems like that is just kind of a weird angle. Is that a little better? It's a little dark in here, too. Um, how are you doing, Mama? So, these are so cute, too. So, this is the Selena cup. cup. They sent these to me. Um, this is what I'm going to be kind of talking about today. This is what my blog post is talking about. They're just a really great menstrual cup option, but they're so darling. They come with like a little bag and then they have like a, so you can clean them and the cup itself. So anyway, I had so many good questions, so I'm going to answer them all here and then hopefully this video will just kind of stay up and you guys can watch it, but if you guys have more questions after this, send them my way, because I'm just thinking there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to using menstrual cups, and we just need to be talking about it more. So I think I after this one, there's a good chance I'll have another live in my future talking about it, because, you know. Anyway. Um, there's a couple, there's actually several different style, styles of menstrual cups. So this is a medium Selena cup. Um, it's really nice. On their website, they have a really um, lengthy description of how to determine what size you need. So I've had two kids, or no, sorry, three kids. <laughs> I've had three kids. So in my mind, I was thinking Diva Cup has a one or a two, and I wear a two. Anyway, I've had three kids, and I have a, a healthy size vagina, and so I use the largest size in the Selena cup, I use the size two in the Diva cup, so I typically kind of have to go for whatever the biggest size is, um, but that's me. <laughs> so I'm 5'9", too. I mean, I'm not really a petite girl by any means, so it's just not a huge surprise that I use... Uh, size menstrual cup. So a couple things I like about the Selena cup. So I have, this is a um, blossom cup, just to kind of show you the different styles. So this one has a stem, this one has a ring, which I really like, and I really like, it's got some ridges here at the bottom, so it's really easy to grab. Because these are, they can get kind of slippery. So I've talked to a couple women who have had some panic trying to get these to come back out after they've put them in, especially if they did a good job with the suction. Um, and so I really like, I feel like this has got a lot of, it's just really easy to grab. So love these. I also love um, the Selena cup has a normal and then an active. So if you have a very strong pelvic floor, which is kind of how I am. I grew up doing ballet and Pilates and yoga, and thankfully, even though I'm not nearly as in good a shape as I was at my younger age, I still have a very strong pelvic floor. So I love um, the active version of this. I feel like it's a little bit firmer, and so it stays in place really well. For those of you who are athletes, I know a lot of women ask and said, I really want to work out in a cup, but I'm concerned about how well that would work. An active might be a really great option for you. And then it looks like that's the packaging for them. So they're an Austrian company. It's super cute. All their stuff's in German. Their website you can totally read in English, but um, I speak German, so I like the extra. It's kind of fun. Anyway, okay, so a couple questions I got. Before I answer questions, I just am going to go over the basics really quick because that might answer a lot of the questions. So a lot of people were like, this looks really big and unusually shaped and all this, like you want me to put that in my vagina and you honestly believe I'm not gonna notice that all day long. And I'm here to tell you that no, if this is placed correctly, just like if a tampon is placed correctly, you won't feel this. It will not bother you if you have the right size and shape. And that's one of the great things about menstrual cups right now. There are so many different brands, so many different shapes and sizes, so you kind of have to find the right one for you. Um, the best analogy that I have for everybody is when we were all 13 
and our, we had to choose between continuing to use pads or trying out a tampon for the first time, we all tried a tampon. And I guarantee we didn't get it the first time. And I also guarantee that we had leaks. We had to learn what size and brand we like best. So, but at 13, you're so much more willing to go through that pain and agony because you're like, my only alternative is pads and I wanna swim. So, so we kind of jump on that tampon bandwagon and figure all that out and go through the leaking and the, and I get it. I get that at 30, you're like, I don't really wanna go through all that again. I went through that at 13. I'm really happy to not be going through that right now in my life. Um, but I'm telling you, it's worth it because menstrual cups are awesome. So some of the best reasons to switch to a cup. They're not dry and scratchy like a tampon. So in terms of an internal device, I just love that. I hate the scratchiness of tampons. They drive me nuts. Tampons also, a lot of them have a lot of chemicals on them. They've been through a lot of chemical processes to make them the white, you know, tampons that they are and also to create the tampon. Um, these are typically medical grade silicone. Um, and like I said, they're just not scratchy. Like a tampon. Um, I also love that you don't have a string hanging out of your body. So these are internal completely. So if you go to pee, you just pee and then just carry on with your day. You know, there's no peeing on strings and changing stuff. Most menstrual cups you can leave in for 12 hours at a time. Um, that's another thing that a lot of women get caught up on is they're like, well, I have this cup in, but if I go to the bathroom, um, in a public bathroom, I don't want to have to change it and it's going to be, you know, a huge pain. Um, you shouldn't have to change it that often. Um, I know a lot of people that have a really good, really heavy flow, maybe might need to change it midday on their first day if that's your heaviest. Um, but for the most part, you shouldn't have to change a cup as often as you change a tampon. Um, I know a lot of women who use cups and discs are concerned because when they go to wipe, they'll see blood. And what happens is, is when you bear down to pee or do anything else you need to in the bathroom or to poop, um, what will happen is sometimes that cup will tip and it will release some menstrual fluid. That doesn't mean your cup is leaking. So I know some people who have kind of jumped the gun and be like, oh, it's leaking, I'm out. No, you're just going to the bathroom. So like if I'm, I'm a disc, like I'm a hardcore disc lover. I, I love cups too, but I, if I'm going to pick anything internal, I really love wearing a disc. Um, but yeah, every time I go to the bathroom, usually when I wipe, I'm going to see some blood. Doesn't mean I'm leaking. doesn't mean I'm going to end up with anything on my undies. So that's something to keep in mind. That's something that I think a lot of women don't know because with a tampon, if you wipe and see blood, it's time to change your tampon. That means your tampon's not working. It's different with a cup. Um, or disc. So what's the difference between the two? I have one right here. So this is a flex disc and this is a menstrual cup. So you can see like they're different. So this, you squeeze like this, slide up and push back and it pops open and it just sits up past your pelvic bone and just kind of catches everything. These are nice because if you have an IUD, you can use these. They don't require you to get the suction right. Um, I feel like in terms of user error, these are an easier introduction to switching to something like this. But that has not been the case with everyone I've talked to. I was like, no, no, discs are so much easier. I have talked to other women who are like, nope, I totally prefer a cup. Way easier to place than the disc. So this is one of those things where like, do I like super OB tampons or do I like, you know, regular Tampax? Like you kind of have to try a couple things to see. So you have to go in open-minded and also you have to be willing to try more than one period. I think that's the other thing is someone will be like, I kind of tried a cut for a period and it just kind of leaked and it just kind of drove me nuts. So I just gave up. To that, I always say, try the cup again on your next period, see how it goes. I always love Thinks panties. Nick Swear is going to be a great backup. In the meantime, you know, if you're trying it out and worried about leaks, you can always throw on some period panties as a backup, you know, until you get the hang of things. Um, so if you want to use a cup, you're going to make sure the cup's clean. Most of them you can boil. Um, there are so many different folds. So the article I wrote about the Selena cups covers three of them. If you get on Pinterest or Google and look up different menstrual cup folds, there's so many different kinds. So, some people like the S fold. Let me get, 
that's the active. Like I said, it's a little more firm. I don't do the S fold, but this, so that's an option. The most common ones is just the C. That one's super easy. So you have to think, so you fold it up like so, and then you just put it in like you would a tampon. And once it gets in there, it pops open, hopefully it sections to your cervix and kind of creates that suction and just stays right in. So another common one is this one. So you do it like that. I think I actually like this one the best of the folds. So if you saw, you just take the tip and fold it down in and then kind of roll it up. And it really does end up being kind of tampon-y shaped. So, and one of the, someone that commented or answered the question on my stories was like, that just looks so big. I can't believe that I won't notice it all day. I found um, a disc. I was like, I had to have been, what, 19? I had roommates, but I was at Walmart and up on the corner shelf, you know, it's, they had a box of soft cups and I was like, what are those? So I brought these home and showed my roommates and they were horrified. They were like, mm -mm, mm mm And so I still remember putting it in for the first time and just being like, this is very strange because I can't feel it. I should be able to feel something that big inside my body, right? <laughs> So, like I said, if you have it placed correctly, it shouldn't bother you. You shouldn't be able to feel it. Like, it should be as comfortable as any tampon or any internal way of managing your period. So, um, they look big, but they really, really aren't. And they're really squishy and comfortable. So, as far as working out goes, my recommendation, if you want to work out in a cup, I highly recommend it. Um, mostly because... This is gonna be so much less damaging. If this is kind of rubbing around a little bit when you're doing things, there's no scratching, there's no, I mean, it is. So that's awesome. Um, I always recommend emptying these before you work out or do any other vigorous anything. So even if you've only been wearing it for an hour or two, I'd still recommend, you know, as you're changing to get go to the gym, just pull it out, dump it, rinse it, put it back in. So just in case, I just, I think that's a good rule of thumb. Um, if you're really worried, like I said, you can always wear period panties as a backup. Um, I know a lot of people that do those. Thinks has some amazing, they have like workout shorts, leotards, they have all sorts of fun stuff to work out in um, as backup. So, not a bad idea. Um, let's see. Oh, someone wrote me and said, I have a hard time keeping these in long term. Do I have a short cervix? You might have a short vaginal canal. Um, if you find that it's working its way down, you may want to try a different shape. So they actually have menstrual cups that are stubbier. They're like wider and like a little bit shorter. That might be a good option for you. I think the Bloody Buddies shaped more like that. I'd have to go look. There's a lot of different shapes and sizes, which I love because it really opens up so many options for so many women who have completely different shapes because you guys, we are not all shaped the same. Um, it looks so big. We went over that. Promise you, it looks so big, but it's really not. Um, if you have an IUD, so I had someone ask about this. Menstrual cups are not recommended for IUD users because the reason that these work so well is because they create like a suction. So you put them on and they um, pop open and suction essentially to your cervix. And if you have an IUD that's, whose strings are hanging out of your cervix, I just, it's just not a good idea. Um, I have used cups while having an IUD, while I had an IUD, and um, never removed my IUD using them, so that's good. It's just not recommended. So I would definitely leave that up to you, but I personally, if you are wanting to go this route, these guys are safe for IUDs. These, questionable. It's one of those things where I feel like the likelihood of it causing an issue is probably slim to none if your IUD is placed correctly, but if your IUD is not placed correctly, this could definitely be a problem. So, <laughs> be, be sure that that's what you want to do. Um, two uteruses. I had someone who's like, I have two uteruses and two cervixes. My answer to you as far as using a cup goes is the same thing. Maybe think about a disc. This just plugs up the whole of your vaginal canal. This 
wants to cover your cervix. So if you have two cervixes, hey, Hannah. <laughs> okay, so I commented back to you too. But if you have two cervixes, I don't, you don't want to wear two of these at the same time. I don't even know how you would place these correctly. So I don't know. It's one of those things though. You could always try one and see how it went, but I would go more like disc. I would more, go more that route if I were you. I think that might just be a better idea. So I don't know. It's a good question. It's definitely something I'm going to reach out to my period friends about and be like, Hey guys, what do you think? So Hannah, I might, I'm going to see if I can find more info for you because that whole concept fascinates me. Okay. So she says, so my cervix is more like a donut with two holes. How crazy is that? I wonder if you went for the largest size too, if that would be enough to cover your cervix. Like I would be interested to see like how big your double cervix actually really is. You are very unique. I have heard of your people before. <laughs> so you're not the first person I've ever heard of that has two uteruses and two cervixes. But um, it was actually, I had um, my, the nurse midwife that I used to work for. I was a birth assistant for her. She was also the nurse practitioner at Planned Parenthood. And what the, still does a lot of gynecological care and did gynecological care there. And she had several clients with your same condition um, that would come to her specifically because she was familiar on how to care for them um, and has gone as far as like placing two IUDs because she had one in particular that wanted IUDs. And so she's like, she got to have two IUDs in her two different uteruses, <laughs> which is so crazy. So wow. She says, I just had a kidney stone. And I found out I have two uteruses as well. Can you believe that? I, the other thing that's crazy is that you could potentially get pregnant in both. That's wild. Like I, yeah, fascinating. Our bodies are amazing. Okay. Um, let's see. Where does the fluid go? I haven't done a really great description yet of like from top to bottom. So how to use a cup, find a fold that works for you. So like I said, I like the C fold or the kind of, I don't know what this is what it's called, but like you like indent it in and fold it up and put it in, put it in. It pops open, should be comfortable. So like I said, shouldn't bother you. You shouldn't be able to feel it. Should just be in there. Good to go for the day. Um, I always recommend removing it for the first time in your shower or bathtub. So first day cup use might be a great thing to do on a Saturday when you're going to be home or a Sunday when you're going to be home. Um, just so that if you are having leaking issues, things like that, it's easier. Or like I said, plan on wearing a backup, wear a pad that day, wear period panties that day. So you're kind of getting the hang of this. When you go to remove it, get in the tub or the shower and you're going, you're just going to reach up, grab, and you want to break the suction when you grab it. This is something that a lot of women don't do. They just go and grab the bottom or they grab the stem and they just start yanking and then it won't come out and then panic sets in. So then the panic sets in and guess what happens with the panic? Everything up there goes <laughs> and clenches up and then you are angrily pulling at a cup <laughs> that won't come out and they can be kind of slippery on the bottom. So then that gets, anyway, it can turn into a hot mess really fast. I've heard a lot of horror stories from people who are like, I will never do that again. And I'm like, you guys, so go and call me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, relaxed, but you just reach up. I love the Selena cup because she has these ridges on the bottom. So it gives you something to grab onto. You want to pinch that bottom because that's going to break the seal on the top. So it changes it enough. Um, oh yeah. Thank you. You can also push it out and it makes it easier without breaking the seal. You guys, if you just bear down, totally can just, in fact, I talked to a woman who had mastered, she's like, yep, if I do this just right, like a Kegel type of move, it would actually push her menstrual cup down far enough that if she had leaned forward, it would just like spill out. And then she's like, then all I would do is just push it back in again and make sure I had a good seal. And that's like, she would just do that over the toilet. No big deal. So if you bear down and like you're doing a good Kegel, it should slide down really easily. And then you just grab and like, like you said, squeeze and just pull it out and it should not be a big deal. You do want to be careful by pulling it out. It typically will have some fluid in it. Um, and so you pull it out with the fluid, take it, rinse it. Like I said, if you're in the shower, it's just way too easy because you rinse it and put it right back in. No big deal. 
So, um, except I take it out to rinse because I'm a germaphobe and old blood grosses me out. You know, and you should though. I think it's a good idea to pull it out every single time and rinse it and then put it back in. Um, I don't know if you I don't know if you need to go as far as rinsing it with anything more than water and um, while you're on your period. And then at the end of your period, now people that do either do a vinegar rinse or they boil it, there's a couple different ways you can sterilize your menstrual cup to store until your next period. So that's how you remove those. Any questions on that? So you do want to, so these are meant to catch the fluid. So you will be pulling out a cup of menstrual fluid, which is essentially it's, blood and clots and you know all that fun stuff so because someone was like where does the fluid go it goes in the cup so instead of you have to think tampons are absorbing just the fluid these are catching everything and that's actually one of the reasons cups like this are better for your vagina so they have found with some women who are big time tampon users that um when they've done a pelvic exam they've gone in and actually found so if you're using a tampon, you're putting it in, it's absorbing just liquid, right? So it's going to leave clots. So, and you, I mean, you've pulled out tampons before. You'll see clots come out with your tampon, but they don't always. Sometimes they end up staying stuck in your cervix and rotting, which is so bad for your vagina. So that's another reason I'm not a super huge fan of tampons. They're just not the best tool for the job. This catches everything. You actually lose all of it. All of it just comes out and you just, and then you just put it back in. It's the same reason of period panties and free bleeding and essentially is that everything just comes out and you're not worrying about any of that stuff getting kind of left in there to rot and wreak havoc in your vagina. So anyway, that's how you use a cup. Um, let's see. Are they comfortable? If you place this correctly, and I've said this a couple times now, if this is placed correctly, they're totally comfortable. They're as comfortable as any tampon, any other internal device that you're gonna use to manage your period. They're pretty easy that way. So does anybody have any other questions? I know I've had a lot of you guys coming in and out kind of throughout this. I'll be posting this for 24 hours, so you, um, you can go back and watch the whole thing. If you do have questions, feel free to message me and I'll try to get back to you. And I hope any of you that had asked questions on the post that I answered them really well here. Um, like I said, so these are the Selena cups. I love them. I think they're such a great product. I've got a whole post about them on the blog um, and more information about these in particular and also just menstrual cups, why they're better for you, how to use them. Um, I just feel like the more we can do to kind of support each other in this, the better because it really is it's an unusual device to kind of get into initially they're a little intimidating you have to go in like a 13 year old though just like a 13 year old tries tampons again and again until they get them you have to have that same attitude about trying menstrual cups so if you guys have more questions please message me thank you so much for watching and i'm excited i have another live coming up on Friday with the coolest um, naturopathic doctor. She specializes in helping with coming off of birth control, hormonal birth control, and how to kind of take care of your body after that. So for sure stay there, tune in on Friday. It's going to be so good. So I will see you guys later.